Hello, greetings. Today, let's take a little detour into the world of Mesa cards. Many of you have been using a 7i76e card until now. It's a cool compact card that essentially allows everything you need with Linux CNC. Fundamentally, it's an interface card, and Linux CNC can be connected to the outside world through it. Moreover, the communication is also very fast. However, there is a small drawback. Currently, the 7i76e is not available for purchase, and this is simply because the FPGA chip used was unavailable for a while. The cards also contain quite old FPGA chips, which is why Mesa came up with something new. They are now using new chips or different FPGA components. I have a 7i96s here, and this card already has the new FPGA chip. How do you establish a connection to the card? Let me show you how I do it and which Linux CNC version I use for that. For this, I have a small test setup, and it looks like this. A small mini PC with a Linux CNC installation in version 2.8.4. The first thing you can do is set up an Ethernet connection. Additionally, the card needs a 5 volt power supply. I took the 5 volt voltage from the USB port. Once the voltage is applied, the card starts blinking. Now I can set up the network connection in Linux CNC. As you can see, I have two network adapters. One represents my internet connection, and the other establishes a direct connection to the Mesa card. I create a new Ethernet connection and select my device, which is the corresponding network card. Up here, I can enter a name. I'll enter 7i96is, and then I set the IP manually. I enter 10101 here and then I press the tab key. I just click on Next. On the 7i96x, I've set the W5 jumper upwards to enter a different IP address range. Otherwise, it would conflict with my home network. Due to the other address range, the card theoretically responds to the IP address 10, 10, 10, 10. We see the response ping, and if I unplug the network cable here, the ping should stop, and if I plug it back in, the ping should continue. This looks very good. With CTRL plus ESC, we can cancel the command. I'm not sure if the Mesa Flash tool works, Let's just try it out. Pseudo Mesa Flash, device 7i96s, adder 10, 10, 10, 10, read mid. Okay, the Mesa Flash tool works. In summary, we can say, the card can be reached via ping, and with the Mesa Flash tool, we can read or write to the card. Due to the different IP address range, I have to remember to always specify the correct IP address. The next step is to create a Linux CNC test configuration. I'll run the PNC configuration wizard, create a new configuration, and name it 7i96s. I won't make any detailed settings. The configuration wizard sometimes does a lot of nonsense. You know, I don't like that thing, and I only use it to create the machine folder and the Linux CNC files. Now, if you are using Linux CNC version 2.8.4, you will also have the entry for 7i96s here. I enter my IP address here and select the minimum on DB1 which represents the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. Otherwise, it won't let me proceed. The 7i96s has five step generators, 11 inputs, six outputs, and an RS422 port, which is a smart serial port. 
Basically, it's a cool little card for operating a milling machine or a lathe with Linux CNC. Let's stick with the configuration wizard. I have to enter values everywhere here just to get it to let me proceed. So I simply enter a 1 and press Enter. I just want a machine configuration to start Linux CNC. Now I have my machine here. I have my machine folder with the files in it. Now I can simply start the machine and see if the card is working. Under HAL Show, I check the first input. The 7i96 is already there. And now I'll just grab GND. The ground goes to common. And now I can short circuit the first input with a wire bridge and 5 volts. So we see that it works. This confirms that the connection is OK. I turn off the machine because there was a viewer question. Can you connect a TSAW smart serial board to the 7i96S? Yes, you can simply connect the board to the available smart serial port. I have done this as an example with this board here. If everything goes well, the TSHW should now be displayed in the HAL. Under 7i96 says the TSHW is visible, so it works without problems. Now, I can click on the potentiometers and see if I can change the analog inputs with my fingers. That works too. I can unplug them and see if the fault is detected. Okay, let's go through again what the card provides now. In the rear part, it has 11 inputs, 6 outputs, 1 spindle output, electronic potentiometer. It also includes one encoder input, and then there is the smart serial communication channel that can be accessed here. Up front, it has 5 outputs for the axes, typically for stepper motor drivers, or step and direction signals for a total of five axes. Additionally, the card has this expansion port. However, the question arises as to how to create a custom bit file here, for example. In the past, this was done through the Xilinx development environment for cards with Spartan 6 FPGA, but now a different FPGA from the company Ephenix is used here. I'm not familiar with how to create a bit file on this one myself, but we'll learn that over time. In general, the card can be used for a milling machine or lathe. Okay, the availability of the card is very good. It is available in almost all shops. There are already a few YouTube videos demonstrating its use. There are also many forum posts about the card. As mentioned, it doesn't really differ from the 7i96, so you can refer to anything that worked with it. It will work with the 7i96 as well. So, it's a cool alternative to the slightly larger 7i76e card. Okay, that's all for now. Maybe I'll make a few more videos with the card, showing how to connect a few things and link them in the HAL. Then I'll say, thanks for watching. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to turn on the bell and I'll say goodbye until the next video.